Overall, I'd say it's a pretty jokingly easy process when I look back on it. And the only tricky bit, I guess, is the fingerprints, but you have the card sent to you, and I just went and got mine done electronically in like two minutes, so it was super easy. So far, it seems like the Griffin Suppressor to Your Door program purposely removes all the steps that are put in there just to make it painful, and their partnership with Capital Armory makes the whole thing just really pretty smooth. Now though, we have the fun part of waiting to see how fast or how slow the wheels of government turn. Hey Wizards, so recently I've had a lot of people who've reached out and asked me about silencers and how to purchase them, and it seems like there's a whole lot of confusion in the whole process. Plus, the government seems to discourage people from buying silencers by making the process as just god-awful as possible. Wait, what? Reddit, Reddit fart lords get mad if you call it a silencer. Oh. Well, f up. Take that. So today, we'll go over the Griffin Armament Silencer to Your Door program that works with Capital Armory to have a suppressor sent directly to your door. Again, the whole point of the government to make it as convoluted and confusing as possible is to discourage you from buying a gun muffler. Gun muffler, that, that, one, that one's for the morons. Their goal, the, the government that is, is to make the process so long and confusing that you probably just won't bother at all. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the whole process through, break it all down in simplistic steps, and show you my process so you know the answer to everything, know what to expect, and how easy it is, and we can give all those guys the middle finger. The wait times really have changed from like half a year to like weeks, probably because people are realizing that this small piece of metal isn't actually a firearm. But what we'll do is we'll go through this whole process so you have a realistic idea of what the wait times are from like when you purchase all the way to when you have the can in hand. Also though, I think there's a lot of fear when it comes to suppressors with a lot of people who say things like, oh Lord, oh my God, I need some pearls to clutch. Why do you need a suppressor? We need a suppressor for where I'm hunting. Them deer don't need to know and not know I'm coming. <laughs> and those statements and those responses are, are super confusing when, you know, a normal person who's educated realizes that a suppressor is like earmuffs for your rifle. So let's do some education because the number one way to break down fear is with knowledge. A suppressor or silencer, I really don't care about your comments, is a device that looks something like this. It's attached to the front of a firearm and works to lower the decibel rating of the weapon system. They often have different types of locking systems, such as the dead air chemo system, direct thread, or dual lock, to name a few examples. Okay, so here's where the dumb comes in. Hollywood isn't real, like the things you see on TV, that's not real, <laughs> but a lot of people don't understand that. The idea that a suppressor is, is super scary comes from all these shows that make it seem like you can take a rifle and make it seem so quiet that nobody can hear it. And I'm super excited to do some education on that because that's stupid. Here's a decibel chart with jet engines, toilet flushing, light rain, and all that. You can see here the decibel rating for a firearm is about 160 to 170 decibels. The dumb comes from Hollywood, where there's this thought that the suppressor can reduce sound from 160 decibels down to 30, making it like a whisper which would mean a suppressor could remove about 140 decibels. But the very, very, very best suppressors that are, exist on the market can at max reduce it by 40. Meaning instead of it sounding like a jet engine at 170, it sounds more like a jackhammer at 120 or 130. I think most people would still be pretty startled by a jackhammer going off. And it's kind of why this thought process to those who understand suppressors is uh, pretty silly. Looking closer at the numbers, we see the suppressor is actually a safety device that just takes the sound signature lower than the threshold to cause permanent hearing loss. But it's still super loud at 120 to 130 decibels and is nowhere near a whisper. Plus the bullet, like the projectile itself, is still traveling faster than the speed of sound. So you're gonna have that loud crack as it breaks the sound barrier, and there's nothing a suppressor can do about that. Also, 
in most European countries where they have even more restrictive gun laws than America, a suppressor is actually required to be on their rifle because it's a safety device. So hopefully now, fearful people are more like, oh, I understand, it's just earmuffs for your rifle. <laughs> All right, so we got cans checked. Now let's battle the idea of the convoluted process with more education and first start with, what the heck is the silencer to your door program? The Griffin Armament Silencer to Your Door program allows you to pick out a silencer online, then you're sent a welcome package with instructions and walk through the process to submit your form for application. And once approved, the suppressor is sent directly to your door. Capital Armory is like an online FFL and they act as an intermediary when you go through the whole process. And that's great for people who live in like a rural environment that has to like drive out to your FFL because normally in the Form 4 process, there's some parts where you have to go and meet your FFL in person. You'd have to drive all the way out there. So in this process, it would be a lot different because you could just use Capital Armory to facilitate all that online and from your house. Also by being able to do it at home, means you don't have to make appointments with your FFL. I had to do that before this whole process. And I had a job at the time that went until the FFL closed, which made the whole process by design far more complicated. So this is a lot easier. As we go through it, I'll show you examples of how the silencer to your door program has a lot more of that flexibility as you do everything online with Capital Armory, like I talked about on your own timeline, because you do it all on shared computer sessions. One other big advantage of the silencer to your door program is there may actually be specials that are going on, like special sales or special deals. And for those, a lot of times your FFL has to be set up for those. And if they don't have it all configured or they're not running that particular special, you as the consumer just miss out. The silencer to your door program then makes it so you can take advantage of all the sales and then makes it that you don't have to go to your FFL and just makes everything a whole lot easier. So let's begin with weaponizing you with some knowledge. For the first step in buying a suppressor is step one, purchase a suppressor. This part is kind of obvious, but the first step you have to pick out what you want. This can be the hardest part as it can be application or connection style specific. You may want different styles for different size barrels. Griffin Armament also has a YouTube page with all the sound testing available to the public, along with technical support videos and all the different connection styles. So spend some time to understand what you want, watch a bunch of those videos so you get the different features that you think are the most important to you. Now, you may be in another camp where you already have a weapon system that has a muzzle device with a connection system already set on it that you wanna use. Such as in my case, I have the Griffin Mark II with the dual lock already. So I looked at the dual lock options and went with the dual lock five. I do also wanna note that Griffin does offer their GI program that gives special pricing for military and contractors for discount rates on specific number of products per calendar year. Now, if you're not able to use that program, you can also use discount code TLDCO to save a whole bunch on pretty much everything at the Griffin Armament website. All right, so after you order, you're gonna get a few different emails that show up. The first is gonna be your order and shipping confirmation from Griffin. Here, they're not shipping the suppressor, but they're sending you a welcome package with the instructions, fingerprint card, a shirt, and a muzzle device if you don't already have one. I like this because then you know that Griffin got your order and you don't just get a whole handful of nothing after making this huge purchase. While you wait for that welcome package to arrive though, you're also gonna receive three different emails from Capital Armory. Look for the first one labeled Create Your Profile. This provides you a link to the tools page to create your like actual suppressor application profile. Now this part is a tad bit confusing because the profile part, like the tools page, is different from the Capital Armory e-commerce page. Like the Capital Armory e-commerce one is where you buy your tax stamps and buy your actual suppressors, where the tools page is the one you use to build your profile and upload your fingerprint cards. Promise, it's not complicated. Profile tools, Capital Armory page, actual e-commerce, buying things, not, not your profile, buying things, capitalarmory.com. At this point, just follow everything on the profile page to complete everything. They'll give you all kinds of instructions and tell you how to do each little bit. Like they told me to use an off-white wall in my house on my cell phone, so the part for my picture took like two minutes total. I also love that I'm explaining how to take a photo against a wall. All right though, so you finish up your whole profile and then the last bit you're gonna see is a part up at the top and it's gonna say that you need to upload your fingerprints. Generally, this is considered the most annoying part, but thankfully they cleaned all this up and you have two really, really easy options. 
One, you can wait for your welcome package from Griffin to come in and you can just fill out your fingerprint cards and then send those back in. Or two, you can look for the second email from Capital Armory that's labeled as, I think, submit your fingerprints. Here there are places in the email where you can locate near you to get your prints done electronically. These locations have a computer that helps you like go through the instructions of how to take your prints and everything. And then they supply you with the digital EFT file so you can have it in the future. But be aware, some of the electronic print places do cost a little bit of money. The fingerprint cards in the welcome kit are free and you also don't have to leave your house. So you can weigh which one you wanna do, but they're both super, super easy. The third email from Capital Armory is to remind you to pay your tax stamp on the Capital Armory e-commerce site to finish your application to the ATF. Again, not the tools profile page, the e-commerce page. Now, you can kind of take this email and the fingerprint one and just flag them for read later because you have to have both your fingerprints and your tax stamp done, like paid for and everything, before the whole application is gonna move forward. So I just waited to pay my tax stamp until my fingerprints were done on my profile, but you know, you do you. All right, so now we just wait for our welcome package to arrive so I can show all that to you, show you the fingerprint cards, and then move on to the next steps. Two days later. So we waited a couple of days. We got our welcome package from Griffin. Let me show you everything that comes in here and then we can move forward with the process. I'm not gonna lie to you. I got a little bit excited and already opened this. I'm sorry. Inside looks like we have our Griffin armament shirt, which is awesome. Our included muzzle device like we talked about two fingerprint cards with ink pads, oh, and some alcohol prep pads, along with an instruction card on how to fill out the entire fingerprint card with a bunch of instructions and examples and all that. Griffin made a fantastic video on how to fill out these fingerprint cards already, so I won't waste another 10 minutes of telling you how to do it, but I will link it down in the description if you wanna watch that video and follow along with them while you do your fingerprint cards. Finally, in our kit is the congrats cards that goes into the details of the next steps. We've talked about most of these already, but you should have already done step one with the emails from Capital Armory, and we're really right here on step two, with step three being paying our stamp on the e-commerce site and then signing everything in step four. So I cheated a little bit here, and while I was waiting for the welcome package to come in, I had my prints done digitally, and I have the whole EFT file, and I uploaded those into my profile page on the Capital Armory tools page, the tools one. Now, you can do that, or you can wait for the fingerprint cards, as there's also an included prepaid envelope. I know it looks like a regular envelope because I don't want to show you all my personal information, but I promise you it is prepaid that allows you to send your fingerprint cards back to Capital Armory. Now, regardless of doing your prints digitally or sending them in with your cards and everything, you only ever do this part once because Capital Armory keeps all your fingerprints on file. So then any subsequent suppressors or applications you do in the future, they'll just pull from your profile, which will now have your prints and all your completed stuff on it. I just wanted my own digital file of my fingerprints in case I needed them in the future. So if you do the digital prints, you just go to the tools page, click on upload, and then you add in the EFT file that's sent to you via email. Now, if you don't do that, then you just send in your fingerprint cards and wait for Capital Armory to update your profile. Now that we have our fingerprints done, our profile is now complete and we need to pay our tax stamp. Here, find this email from Capital Armory titled Capital Armory Fulfillment from Griffin Armament and click the link to purchase the applicable tax stamp. Here, I selected the Griffin Armament Form 4 Transfer Fee Stamp. I also highly recommend you use the same email address for the e-commerce page, for the Capital Armory Tools page, and for your ATF e-forms, because it's just gonna make all of it a ton smoother. Once your profile is complete and you paid your tax stamp, you'll get your first set of DocuSign requests from Capital Armory to kind of get the ball rolling. For me, this took about five or six hours from when I uploaded my fingerprints and paid my tax stamp. It was, it was pretty fast. So I signed everything, sent it all in, I got a confirmation of my signatures, and then I got another email from Capital Armory that said for the next step, Capital Armory is gonna draft the actual e-form request to the ATF, and they're gonna notify me as soon as it's ready to be certified. So now, we wait. Approximately 12 hours later. Well, we got planes overhead, must be time to record. And I got an email from Capital Armory this morning letting me know all my stuff's ready to be certified. The next bit, Capital Armory gives you some pretty detailed instructions, so just make sure to follow them because you need to have your ATF eForms username and your PIN. You can log into the eForms website to get your username and you can reset your PIN if you forgot it for some reason. 
So you'll follow the email, all the instructions, you'll click on the link that says certify, and then the actual certify portion. It'll bring up a pop-up where you answer a bunch of questions, and you'll be like, yes, I have my username, yes, I have my PIN, yes, I'm ready to certify. And then there's gonna be a box at the bottom that says stop, don't go any further and call us right now. Just, this is where you stop and you give them a call. Don't randomly click all over the place because this is the part where you actually have to have Capital Armory there with you. As I said at the beginning, this is probably one of my favorite bits too, because you're calling Capital Armory when you're free, like when you have the availability. Instead of having to coordinate with your FFL and your schedule and set something out like six or eight weeks later when you guys can actually finally meet up. So when you're available, grab your computer and give them a ring. And when you call, they let you know how many people are in line before you and what the approximate wait time is. When I called in, I think the wait time was like 15 minutes, which was almost right on the money. And it seemed like it took about three to four minutes per person that was in front of me in line. Hey, shut up, you stupid bird. Now, when it's your turn, this part's pretty cool because the agent, they verify you have everything again, all the stuff you said you already had. And then they have you click the little red stop button to go ahead and move into the certify portion. And this brings you to a screen where the Capital Armory agent is sharing their screen with you. They have you take over so you can answer the form questions along with making your signature and inputting your eForms username and PIN. Now you can't copy paste like your username or your PIN because you're technically controlling someone else's computer and it, it just doesn't work that way. The eForms username is also stupid government nonsense like it always is. So make sure to write it down or have it available before you make this call. But after you sign everything and do everything with the agent, they let you know your form is certified and you're gonna get more instructions from Capital Armory on all the next steps. I said thanks and got an immediate confirmation email from Capital Armory and another one from the ATF notifying me my Form 4 application has been submitted. And that's it, uh, super duper easy so far. And now I just wait for the ATF to approve my Form 4 and I'll do a follow-up video to this to let you know about how long that wait time is. Overall, I'd say it's a pretty jokingly easy process when I look back on it. And the only tricky bit, I guess, is the fingerprints, but you have the card sent to you and I just went and got mine done electronically in like two minutes, so it was super easy. So far, it seems like the Griffin Suppressor to Your Door program purposely removes all the steps that are put in there just to make it painful, and their partnership with Capital Armory makes the whole thing just really pretty smooth. Now though, we have the fun part of waiting to see how fast or how slow the wheels of government turn. I'll follow up with another video with my next steps to see how long the process takes to receive the suppressor directly to my door. I'll let you know too if there's any other hoops I have to jump through. There are a couple more things that have come up, but I'll do it all at the end so you know what the whole process is from the beginning all the way to the end. It's not all that bad though, I'm just being dramatic. I'll simplify it all for you and show you it all in the video. But I hope this video on the suppressor to your door program helped you understand the process and simplified it for you to make it easier if you wanna pick up your own silencer. I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon supporters and our YouTube members. You guys make it possible we can try all these things out, go through all these processes, and show them all to you so we can educate everyone. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what you think about the Capital Armory process and how you think it compares to like the e-forms process. I wanna hear about it. All right, everyone, Walsh out. Now here's the part I don't understand. Like I already have, I already own a silencer. I own more than one. I've gone through this whole process twice now. Why, why in the world would you look at my application like, oh, who is this guy? Like I'm the guy you've already approved twice. So now you need all these things you've already seen again. It's like whoever designed this process has the brain power of a shoe. It, no wonder it takes like six months. It's the dumbest, most dumb possible. Just if you've already approved me, why, why do you not know you've already approved me? Like how, how dumb is that? I also printed this out so we can read it together. Yes, a suppressor and a silencer are the same thing. The term suppressor came about due to a variety of factors in the gun industry, probably from idiots on Reddit too. Hiriam Percy Maxim invented the suppressor in 1909 and referred to it as the Maxim silencer. In his patent and marketing materials, the word silencer caught on quickly and remained a steadfast term throughout the years. Today, silencer is used more so in the legal definition in both state and federal regulations, as well as on ATF forms. Suppressors are mufflers for firearms that function by trapping the expanded gases at the muzzle, allowing them to slowly cool. 
They are not silent, but can reduce the noise to about 14 to 43 decibels. They are primarily for hearing protection and can also reduce or eliminate muzzle flash. So technically, if you don't call it a muffler, you're wrong. It's not suppressor, it's not silencer, it's muffler. Uh, that would make you be internet wrong, which, which doesn't actually mean anything in the world. So yeah, enjoy that. So uh, thanks everybody. I'm now waiting for my suppressor to show up. I'm excited. I don't think it's gonna take very long. We're almost at the end of the process already. I'll go through it all, but I think that's it. All right, I hope this was helpful. Got more cool stuff coming up. All right, get out of here.